Howdy folks, welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Time for some epic tank action today. This is Urban Tarzan, and he is driving his VK3001H. Now I, I liked my 3001H when I had it, but it was a little frustrating. It is very fast, it has absolutely no armour. And when I was driving it, the L70 75mm gun was not that good. This was back when the Panzer IV had that gun, uh, before it got removed from the Panzer IV and buffed for the Stug and the German Tier VI mediums. So pretty much the only real choice of gun when I was driving the 3001H was the L56 88mm, the short 88. Now that gave this tank some punch, but you could only fit that gun onto the turret that you can see him equipped here, the Schmaltern. And look at how slowly that turret turns. That was the big problem with this tank, and that to be effective you pretty much had to use the 88mm gun. But the 88mm gun could only be fitted to one of the slowest turning turrets in the game, which kind of negated the fact that you had to drive this tank like a fast flanking medium. Now this is interesting actually, because what Urban Tarzan has done here is he's got that big turret because it does have very very good armour. It's 120mm of armour at the front, and it's sloped and it's angled. But he's using the L70. Now this is the buffed L70, post patch 7.5. So it's got good penetration, rate of fire is good, the accuracy is good. And what you're going to see Urban Tarzan doing here is using the turret of this gun. And he drives this tank around backwards a lot. Just to try and get the angles he needs. There's his first kill, an M3 Lee. This really is a very, very good gun. It's, um... It was probably a little bit too good for the Panzer IV. You know, truth be told. And it's not a bad choice on the German Tier Six mediums. It doesn't look like he's actually missed a shot yet. See the DPM. The fast aiming time. The accuracy. And there's his second kill. Oh, he's taken... Oh! Panzer three, four shooting at him. Stuart taking pot shots. So... And as you can see, you only have 750 health in this thing. He's taken one hit. 270 damage. But it's only a tier 6 game. Oh, there's an A20. <laughs> there, there was an A20. Well, Stug's just been nailed. Yeah, the team is getting its arse kicked. He is the only person on the team to score any kills so far. They're losing 3-10. Everybody left on the team is just confined into this little corner of the map. Oh, Jagdpanzer full. So he moves up so that only his turret is showing and nails the kill. Kill number four, and then there's a Covenanter. And that is the first shot he's fired today that's missed. The Covenanter fires and it bounces off the turret. See what he's doing here? He's using the turret. Getting himself hull down. There's only three of them left, and again, he's the only person on the team who scored any of the kills. Stug's coming around. What gun does he have? He's got the L70 as well. He's taking pot shots at the AT2. Oh, good hit. There you go, AT2 nails the Stug. So we're still only on four kills. Oh, crap, Panzer four behind us. Not anymore. He's still driving this thing around backwards. <laughs> Trying to take a shot under the wreck of that dead TD. Nearly pulled it off. Although it would probably just bounced off the upper glacis of that header there. But it forced him to back off. Now, it's an encounter battle, so somebody's capping. Probably that T-40. There's only two of them left. Oh, there's the Hetzer. Hetzer fires, misses. We don't miss. Again, only giving the Hetzer his turret. Taking shots in the ass there. It's that Covenanter. 
Top Gun. 82 nails the header for him. Oh, that was such a lucky shot. So little of that Stuart visible. Panzer three, and an S35CA. Oh, this is bad. The S35CA has a very, very, very dangerous gun. But he doesn't seem to be pointing it in the right direction. So again, he backs off, only gives him his turret. And executes him. Seven kills. There's that Stuart again. Come on, one more of those. One more of those. What was he going to get away? Yeah. Oh, we're being flanked. A20, he's just sitting there in the cap circle. <laughs> Well, there's his Radley Walters medal. There are two people sitting in the cap circle. Of course, he's only down to 366 health. Now, Matilda... Ah, ah, there we go. Panzer three and a Matilda. So, again, gets himself hold down. All he's showing is his turret. And the Matilda... Well, that's the tier four Matilda. If he's got the gun with the little John adapter, he might have the penetration. He's moving to get a better shot. Or no, he's moving to get into cover. Matilda's got a tough little turret. But he keeps showing him his side, so... There's Poole's medal. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, Panzer three. Bang, there you go. And the side armour of the 3001H is garbage. Even a Panzer three can penetrate it. See where it went in there, just under the turret. Yeah. He's blazing away at where the Panzer III was last spotted. There's only one there. The Panzer III is the. Okay, he was not in the cap circle, so there's still somebody in the cap circle. All they have left is a T40 and a KV1. Ten kills. <laughs> this guy's on fire. I've never seen anybody do this well in a 3001H. When I mean, I've gotten a few Top Guns in my 3001H. But it was kill stealing like a pro. <laughs> Urban Tarzan, he ain't doing any kill stealing. Where's that T40? And where's the KV1? KV4 hasn't been spotted. A KV4? <laughs> You'd shit your pants if you thought there was a KV-4 in this game. That KV-1 hasn't been spotted the entire game. He could be absolutely anywhere. And we only have 178 health. And even a T-40 is more than capable of finishing us off. There's the T-40. Okay, let's not be stupid. Let's, let's, let's not, you know, let our lust for blood... Get us killed. He's gonna try to. Well, the first, the first thing he's gonna do is he's only, oh he's fired. Tricked him into shooting at the turret. He missed. Bang. Eleven kills. Now it's one on one. Now this turret does have good view range. So he's got a couple of choices here. He can go looking for the KV-1, but if the KV-1's camped in the forest, which is likely, he'll probably still spot us before we spot the KV-1. Or you can sit in the cap circle and force him to come to you. Now there's two different people on the enemy team here saying the KV-1's AFK. But I've seen people get suckered into that before. Say, oh yeah, the last one's AFK, just go and kill him. And the last one is not AFK, and he's sitting in ambush waiting for you to come to their deployment zone. So, yeah, let's not just take it for granted. Keeping an eye on where he judges to be the KV-1's most likely avenue of approach. Still no sign of him. And they keep telling him, and now that's three different people have said the KV-1's AFK. Hmm. Even if he is AFK, I've played games where we've come across the last enemy tank and they've just been sitting there in the start zone, and they, but they're not actually AFK, they're just 
scumbag leeches. And they actually start to defend themselves once you start putting shots in them. Or bot programs that will just auto-fire at any visible target in range. So if this guy is AFK, he's not necessarily not a threat. So he's going to go for it. He's just decided there, yeah, in for a penny, in for a pound, what the hell. What's the worst that can happen? See if we can add a KV-1 to the list. 12 kills. That would be awesome. There he is. Yep, as advertised. He's AFK. Now, if this guy reacts when we put a shot into him, we could be in trouble. But no, he is completely 100% AFK. Biggest tank on the enemy team. Well, not strictly true. The biggest heavy tank on the enemy team. What a waste. But 12 kills. That was legendary. This one's epic on a number of different levels. Uh, this is Clicksaw in his KV-5. First of all, we've got an SU-26 in this game, who's blaming the matchmaking because he platooned up with a Tier 4 scout. But there's Clicksaw's first kill. Now, KV-5 is not the fastest machine in the world. He's driven all the way over to this side of the map. <sighs> Look at that. Half of the enemy team just drove right over the middle of the map. Straight into the base. Now you know that in common with a lot of KV-5 drivers, because the penetration of this gun is not fantastic, they carry a stock of premium ammo. Now, Clixo hasn't used any of this APCR ammo yet, but he's got 10 shots just in case he needs them. And here comes the range. First, first the SU-100 on his team is accusing everybody on Clixo's team of being noobs. Now, to, to get this kind of result, you need your team to be crap. No two ways about it, your team needs to suck. But it, but the enemy team also needs to suck. Just not quite as much as your team does. There's a tier 3 artillery doing in this game. Who's he platooned with? Yeah, tier 3 artillery platoon with a KV-1S. This is the kind of thing you have to put up with in random battles. Never turn your back on a KV-5, mate. <laughs> I don't care if you are in a T-32. There's his third kill. And he's accurately predicting where that Type 59 is going to go. Booyah! There's his fourth kill. Plenty more where that one came from. Unbelievably, the SU-26 actually has a kill. <laughs> and he's still alive. <laughs> and now there it is. Now the enemy Type 59 is saying that his team are a bunch of noobs. Oh, he's had his turret ring taken out. He's used his repair kit. Um, it's debatable. Was that the right choice? Well, I guess we'll find out. Needed to kill that KV-1S. So, good stuff. Still got over a thousand health left. Look at them all. They've seen the T-34-85 take a hit. <laughs> so they all cower around the corner and just wait for him to die. 
And here they come. Now there's a tiger over there. Nasty gun. But, look what's coming up behind him. And that's not all. You're not going to believe this. In fact, I'm going to pull out and give you an external camera use. Just so you can see what exactly is coming round to take shots at it. Sandwich between two SU-100s. No problem. Yep, here comes artillery. <laughs> but watch this. What's that SU-100 there? Watch this. And... Fail! <laughs> oh, that was awesome. That was just so awesome. And Clicksaw hasn't fired a single round of premium ammunition yet. Uh, premium ammunition yet. He's probably raging at that SU-100 for stealing his kill. <laughs> he could have had that. <laughs> I am 37. And there we go. 10 kills. Oh, could have been a 12 kill game. This could have been a, this, he could have gotten himself a crucial contribution <laughs> by himself. If that scumbag SU-100 hadn't killed that scumbag M37 on his own team. Now you don't want to die at this stage, not after doing this well. So now he switched to the premium ammo because he doesn't want to, He wants to make sure he penetrates this tiger with every shot because the tiger can give him problems. But not nearly as many problems as he's given this tiger. Come on, one more. No, she's probably going to take two more. Yep. Come on, come on. And just like a boss, using the Rex as cover. So good. So this is uh, Verz. He's in his mouse. This is actually from the Russian server. As you can tell by looking at the chat. And a lot of you may not even know what this map is. This is Dragon's Ridge. This is a map that they seem to have been having problems with over and over and over again. I really like this map. They initially introduced it in patch... Ooh, I can't even remember. Prior to patch 8. Prior to physics. Um, but it was causing red screens. Horrible bugs for some, for some people. Don't know why. They had some frame rate issues in the valley on the other side of the map, which you can't see from here. So they took it down. Um, and they went away to fix it. And then they introduced physics. And and they put Dragon's Ridge back in. Remodelled it for physics. You couldn't get down into this part of the map previously. This opened up a whole new area of the map to play in. And then, for some reason, they removed it from the rotation again. And I really, really like this map. So anyway, here's Vers in a map that you just can't play anymore. Two lucky penetrating hits on that IS-7. Considering that it showed an orange penetration marker both times. And again. Well done. Well, that's one dead IS-7 on the other two. And unfortunately, they've lost a batch out. An IS-8. That looks like a 1375 and a T-50-2. But they've just taken out another... Well, that's an IS-8 one there. He's closing in on this Object 704. Now, the mouse is a tough machine. It really, really, really is. But the Object 704 is a really nasty gun. Hits him in the side. And those side skirts absorbed most of the damage. He hasn't actually taken a single point of damage yet. Although he has got, had his tracks damaged. Never underestimate a mouse. I'd like to get one, but I just, I really, I'm not a, I'm not looking forward to the idea of going through the 4502A to get to it. <laughs> That's probably not going to be one of my favourite tanks. Well, this team is completely getting its ass kicked. 
E75 just drove right into the front of that Object 704. Object 704 fired one through his lower plate, set his engine on fire, burned him to death. They're losing 3-9. The only friendly tanks left alive are all at this end of the map and artillery. Claw one back. Oh, Lorraine nails their pattern. But this is... Oh, that was a good shot. Jagdpanzer E100 Amarak the Object 704. So that's useful. It's probably not going to be enough. Still losing 5-10. There's only a third of them left. There's two thirds of the enemy team left. And we don't know where any of them are. And this is not the ideal terrain on which to be driving a mouse. Because it's so bloody slow and heavy. And it looks like Verz is trying to figure out what's the best way to go. Should he go and back up the rest of his team? They're being capped. He's never going to get there. But what else can he do? He's, he's, he's never going to cap himself. He's too big and too slow. And the enemy capture point is almost as far away as his own capture point. So it makes sense to go back with your team as, as best as you can. But none of them are waiting for him. Object 704 up there. Looks like he just put a good one into that pattern. Look at how slow he's going up this hill. At anything between 4 and 8 kilometres per hour. They've just lost the Lorraine. He puts another good hit into that pattern. Object 704 is closing around to finish off the job. Artillery stuffed. Completely stuffed. He's got T50-2 and a T54 on him. There we go. It's just the tank destroyers and the mouse left. And the Object 704 is not looking too clever. The Agpanzer E100's taken a hit. The enemy team still have twice as many tanks. More than twice as many, what am I talking about? We only have three. They've still got all their artillery. Verza's only hope is to get himself into a spot where artillery cannot hit him. And this spot looks like being it, but look at how slow he's going. He's just lost the Object 704. He made the right decision to come back and try to support his team, but he's just in the wrong tank to be doing it. T50-2's gotten around that Jagdpanzer E100. E100 kills the Lorraine. And they know he's here now. They must know he's here by now. Is he really going to be... Is he going to be able to get around behind them? Really? No. Now they know where he is. That pattern spotted him now. And that Lorraine... He's also waiting for him to come round. So, this is good. Kiss the Lorraine goodbye. Takes the hit from the pattern. He obviously knew that was coming. That looked like artillery shooting at him. Now that's going to be one very nervous pan driver, because this is almost a full health mouse. And that pan's taking some big old hits from the Object 704. <coughs> and he's reversing. <laughs> really? You couldn't maybe think of, you know, turning around? <laughs> Would that not have worked out better? Well, he's being pummeled by artillery. That was a big old hit from the Object 261. And he's all alone now. He's got nobody left alive on his team. Is he really? Balls of steel. Balls of steel. But if you think about it, he needed to do that. He didn't actually take any damage from it. He just took his own tracks off. But he couldn't sit there at the top of that hill in something as slow and immobile as a mouse and get pummeled by artillery. And now, they cannot come around behind him. Now he can angle his armour and keep his front pointed towards the major threat. T-50-2 cannot hurt him. Doesn't have the gun for it. He can safely ignore the T-50-2. The worst the T-50 can do is damage his tracks. And he is completely ignoring it. Waggling his turret while the T110E5 is shooting at him. 
takes a big hit there. Not sure what it was. It's only going to take one more to kill this T125 now. Completely ignoring the T50-2. Absolutely the right thing to do. Reload, reload, reload. Bingo. Yeah, you see, you could have capped. You guys could have all just capped. But no, no, no. It's only a mouse. <laughs> Let's kill him. <laughs> yeah, you're not so brave now, are you, boys? And he's running for his life. <laughs> Is he going to get away? Who cares? He can't hurt him. <gasps> There's Artie. Oh, move, move, move. Or kill them. Choice is yours. <laughs> well, he's used his stock of premium ammo on the T-110E5. He's got two shots left. He's probably forgotten he's still firing premium at this stage. He only carried ten. But you'll find that's true of a lot of, a lot of tanks that don't have very good guns. Oh, now they're capping. <laughs> Yeah, now they're thinking, yeah, perhaps we should cap after all. <laughs> oh, never underestimate a mouse, guys. Very, very good ammo carrying capacity in these things. Um, you get some tanks, like um, IS-6 springs to mind. Very low ammo capacity. Oh, that's not good. Right, we're going to take a hit here. Object's probably hoping it could have been better, but you know what? He, he cannot. He cannot stop. He's got to try to get over here. Reset this cap. T fifty two had the right idea. It's just a shame he didn't have this idea five minutes ago. Cap reset. <laughs> and we know where the object 261 is at least. However, things are looking pretty dangerous here now. Oh, there he is. I'm going to put my money on the mouse. <laughs> Seven kills. Right. Yeah, that tier 7 artillery is probably not feeling very confident right now. <laughs> but yeah, I keep getting sidetracked. The tanks like the IS 6. Um, don't have a very large ammo capacity. So you've got to be careful choosing the right mix and match of ammo. But the mouse can carry loads of ammo. So carrying a stock of uh, of 10 APCR on the mouse, it's not such a big trade-off. You can even afford to carry a couple of HE just in case and still have 50 rounds of regular AP ammo. And you will find... Oh yeah, boom. <laughs> the machines like the mouse, like the Super Pershing, like the KV-5. Machines that don't have very good guns will tend to carry a stock of premium ammo. That they like to keep handy for close encounters. So that's uh, eight kills in a mouse <laughs> from a team that could have won. Easily won if they'd just capped. But no, there's only one mouse left. Let's go and kill him. I mean, how hard can it be? <laughs> so well done, Vers. That's a very, very good Kolobanov's medal there. Excellent, excellent work. Good to see. So we're going to wrap up with uh, Circonflexes. Uh, now, I live stream with Circonflexes on Mondays, but I, I actually missed this one. This was not from one of the Monday night uh, live streams. He's driving his KV-5. It's a tier 9 game. It's a pretty harsh matchmaking for the KV-5. And he's here on Lakeshire. And this is epic for all different kinds of reasons. You're not going to believe this. So, pretty conservative at the start. He's, you know, getting the lay of the land, looking to see which way the teams are moving. Trying to decide... How am I going to play my KV-5 in this game? Because, you know, big, slow, heavily armoured, heavy tank with a average gun, lousy gun depression, massive weak spots. 
You can see him having to think about it. Targets pop up. No, can't hit the Centurion. Centurion's about to run into all sorts of problems, and he, he, you can see he's just thinking, screw it. Scout KV-5. <laughs> and I say the kv is slow, but it does have a... I mean, it's a 100-ton tank, but it does have a powerful engine. And when you go... Oh, <laughs> watch this. Ramming speed, 40 kph. Boom! <laughs> 800 damage. He literally crushed that WZ under his wheels. <laughs> and, and he took... That was 800 ramming damage. And he took 131 damage in exchange. <laughs> that was epic. So he's already done 1,400 damage here, and he's only fired two shots. <laughs> oh, this tank is just so troll. <laughs> okay, he's going to have to use this rock now. Um, getting shot at in the flank by a T-34 is bad news. On the other hand, shooting T-34s in the flank never gets old. Right, that Tiger P's being a bit cheeky. That's not a Tiger P, sorry, it's a Tiger. Down to 12 health, and we really need that guy dead to be safe to continue moving down this road. But while he's in cover behind the house, we get up to this rock, and now we can turn our front towards him. If he risks popping out to take another shot and get to the next rock, it's KV5 scouting, yo! <laughs> How's he getting away with this? Oh, Yag Tiger 88. Okay, Yag Tiger 88, and this is bad news. There's a flank shot from the Tiger, does no damage, just takes his tracks off, it repairs that straight away. And he's still only using standard ammo, he's not even switching to APCR premium ammo for the Yag Tiger 88. Fires on the move, takes his tracks off. <laughs> oh, perfect. Can he, can he get around? He's just managed to repair his tracks. Guess what? <laughs> Takes his tracks off again. <laughs> so pro. <laughs> and he's getting shot at from behind here by that T29, but it's just bouncing off his ass. KV-5 is such a monstrously armoured tank. That <laughs> Yak Tiger 88 is having a very, very bad day. Oh, he's got behind him. <laughs> In a KV-5. Oh, man. Now there's an IS down the river road who's getting involved in the action as well. There's his uh, second kill. <laughs> and he's, he's thirsty for more. T29, how dare you shoot at me. Angling his armour. Firing on the move. Pretty ineffective so far. He's straightened out. He just wants to close the distance on this T-29. He's got the health to take a hit or two. That was high explosive, it only did 22 damage. The T-29 is getting desperate. Ah, uh, the T-29 only has the... Hell, is that even the 90mm gun? That may even be... That's the 76mm gun! <laughs> oh, oh this, is just like, this is like seal clubbing. <laughs> He's getting so desperate he switched to high explosive ammo for the 76mm. That's why he's only doing 17 damage per hit. <laughs> oh, T29 drivers, trust me, it will be worth it. Oh crap, artillery. That was a spot of luck. Okay, he only took 192 damage from that because this tank has such heavy armour. But he couldn't... He couldn't go after the M12 because... It took his tracks off, and he'd already used a repair kit, so... Artie is going to get the opportunity to put another one into him. He will have reloaded by the time he gets around here, but he just doesn't care. <laughs> well, that also works. Oh, he's fired! <laughs> he panicked, he fired. You're so dead. Booyah! <laughs> oh, suddenly, a wild tiger too appears. <laughs> Um, but the guy's in the valley. Oh, straight in the flank. Track damage only. Rams him. Finishes his tracks off. Keeps him pinned there. 
Come on then, Target 2. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You think you, you think you're big time? Say hello to my little friend. Target 2 gets a good hit into him. And here comes that E75 over the ridge. With the guys in the valley finally pushing over. Now, an ST1. Now this is bad news. We're down to 675 health. Unless he amoraxes, us, he can't kill us in one shot, but he can kill us in two. So we better be cautious, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not today. Caution is for the weak. They only have two tanks left. They've both got that big M62 Russian 122mm gun. And they're both coming this way. <laughs> Circumflexes doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, come on! I'll take you all on. I am invincible. Oh, there's the IS-8. Can we get a shot? Oh, we can. Booyah! <laughs> it's over 5,000 damage done in a KV-5. Oh, there's the ST-1. Or the STI, or whatever you want to call it. And it's not surprising to bounce off an STI with this 107mm gun. So you switch to HE, just to keep him occupied while the team caps. Look at this. <laughs> he's scouting, he's counter-battering artillery, he's defending the cap. This was mad. This was a crazy game. There we go. Bit of HE spam. Oh, he's pointing his gun this way. I don't like this anymore. More HE spam. He fires and he misses. He hits the wreckage in front of us. Come on, guys. He's single-handedly holding off. <laughs> the only two remaining tanks on the enemy team that can reset the cap. Back to AP for the IS-8, because you can penetrate an IS-8. Oh, he's had his tracks blown off. Oh, it bounced. Damn it. Oh, the ST1's coming in. Oh, this is... Oh, and there goes the ISA. ST101 finished him off. Bang. And all he does is damage his tracks. He takes a hit from the STI. <laughs> and, oh. Well, the STI's managed to reset the cap. Actually, no, it's the guys in the cap circle who said, screw this. <laughs> We're going to kill you. Bam. There you go. So, yeah, not, not a terrible result in the old KV-5, I'm sure you'll agree. And I hope you guys were as entertained by this little compilation of people driving their tanks in man mode as I was. As always, folks, take care on that battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.